Brand Chemistry, where that happens, and maybe we'll swing back into an area or two uh, that we can tease for, for future live streams. But we're gonna just go ahead and do that now. So just follow me on down through this door. Got someone dropping stuff on us from above. So what we'll do here is we're going to go through these doors. Now, typically, I would have to fob through these doors. If you ever come to the Sea Life Center, you'll see people kind of like, boop, we're at the little fobs there, and that's how we get back here. But right now, we're just going to walk on through, and that brings us to kind of our uh, little central morning meeting area. Now, obviously, with social distancing, we're not doing our morning meetings here. But something we can tease for a future presentation, perhaps, is talking about our wildlife response program. So the Sea Life Center does respond to uh, stranded animals, and we don't have any right now, uh, but maybe if we have any, or uh, we can just go back into the clinic at some point here and show you what we would do if we had a stranded animal. But let's continue on. Like I said, maybe a future uh, presentation for that. What we're looking at today is actually our lab corridor. So we're gonna be headed down this long hallway, and along this hallway we have uh, areas dedicated to animal care and areas dedicated to our research here. So that's kind of what we're gonna take a look at. First thing we're gonna say, we're going to swing on into our food preparation kitchen. Obviously, we got a lot of animals at the Sea Life Center. Obviously, they have to eat, and we have to provide that food for them. So come on in. We'll just take a quick look. It's a little echo in here, so hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, but this is sort of where some of the food prep takes place. Now, food prep can also take place uh, in the dedicated curatorial areas for those animals. Uh, but this right back here, this is actually a big old walk-in freezer that we keep our food in. Now, what do ocean animals eat? Well, usually more ocean animals, right? So the sort of stuff we're feeding them, uh, fish, squid, even krill. Uh, so we can go from stuff, you know, as small as little krill, or even smaller. We do culture some plankton here ourselves uh, to feed our filter feeders, but we start small and we have larger and larger and larger food for our animals that may have larger mouths and larger appetites, all the way up to, you know, full-grown salmon. Uh, and in fact, our sea lions, you saw Mara perhaps the other day on our Facebook page, uh, she actually uh, could swallow a salmon hole. Now we tend to cut it up for them uh, nice and small, uh, kind of dole out for a couple meals throughout the day. But that's pretty fascinating to watch a sea lion just swallow a, a massive fish whole because they, of course they don't chew their food. So we'll just head right back on out in the hallway here. All right, so we're back in our lab corridor. As we go by, you can kind of see we have some pictures here um, of the food that we feed. Again, all the way from salmon on down to uh, the smaller food for our filter feeders. One really cute picture to really show is right here. Uh, we got uh, someone here at the Sea Life Center formula feeding a walrus calf that was here for our wildlife response program. And so uh, you can see we have to take care of all the animals that might be here. They might catch. I mean, this is a busy corridor in the center. So right now we're just trying to stay out of people's way, uh, but we're going to sneak on down and maybe pop our head into a curatorial area. So I keep mentioning labs and I keep mentioning these curatorial areas. Curatorial areas at the Sea Life Center are where we can hold these animals uh, when they're not out in the habitats. Uh, so we're going to actually swing in, just take a peek at a curatorial area for our aquarium department. Aquarium here at the Sea Life Center, they are in charge of anything that is not a mammal or a bird. So that means they're in charge of fish, obviously, but those invertebrates you might have seen in our touch tank presentation the other day with Leo, uh, all those invertebrates, um, even a lot of the, the marine plants here. You know, we've got kelps and algae that some of our tanks have. Uh, those fall into the purview a lot of times of our aquarium department. So we're just going to peek back behind the scenes even further uh, and see a curatorial area really quick. And I'll be right this way. Now I'll hold the door for you so we're not uh, going to worry about our doorknobs today. There's Leo! Oh yes, Leo. So this is just our uh, curatorial area and again we might show this for a future stream. Uh, today we're just going to kind of preview around in here. We can see all sorts of tanks of all sorts of sizes. We've even got this big old 10 foot circular tank behind it. Uh, all the way down to these smaller tanks and occasionally we even have plankton tanks in here for your really teeny tiny guys. So some really cool stuff. Hopefully we can do a tour back here in a future stream. It's a little noisy today though, so we'll come back another time. All right, we'll go down this hallway here. This is kind of our T intersection. This hallway isn't a curatorial hallway or a research hallway. 
but it is a, uh, a hallway with access to some of our animals. This actually takes us out onto the ODL, uh, or outdoor lab, or outdoor laboratory. And so what that is are holding pools for a lot of our marine mammals. If you ever come to the Sea Life Center, if you're up at our touch tanks, you look out back, you see these big, like, they look like swimming pools, except we got a sea lion or a seal. Uh, a couple years back, we had a little walrus calf in there, um, and then even a, a little beluga calf for a while when we were uh, working with that through our wildlife response. Um, but going through these doors gets you out there, so we can, we can kind of just peek. Really, it doesn't look like anything. we got some fences between us and the, uh, the pools back there, but maybe, right? Write down in the comments if you want to go on out there uh, and check out our outdoor labs. Uh, we've got some really cool animals out there, actually. On the way, this is one of my favorite things in the building, and of course it's hidden back in the hallway, we got animal paintings. Uh, we have to work with our animals. You know, it's a lot of training. Sometimes we can turn that training into fun. Uh, into a little bit of enrichment about having the animal just do what it wants and, and, and kind of be a little creative. So just giving them a brush, letting them smear on a page, it's fun. Uh, we even do this with our birds here, and maybe we can get a session of that. We uh, actually let the birds kind of stomp around on some uh, animal safe paint, and then they can stomp across a little uh, canvas and, and leave a nice painting. But let's continue on down the uh, research corridor here. So we're going to keep going this way. Now, where we're starting to get to are actually our labs. Uh, so we're going to pass by a couple labs. Some of the labs have shuttered windows right now, but earlier I did a little run through. There's some labs we'll be able to kind of peek into, including our central lab. So here at the Sea Life Center, we're constantly uh, doing research, just trying to check up on the health of our animals as well. Um, so any tissue samples, blood samples, uh, cultures of things, that sort of stuff we could do here in-house. And the central lab is where a lot of that work takes place. We also have to do just as basic stuff. If you're an aquarium keeper at home, maybe you do little pH tests in your aquarium. We have to make sure our water is safe for our animals here too. So we do water quality checks and that also gets processed in our central lab. So the central lab is right on up here. We can peek through the big window, I think. No one's really doing much in there right now today. Uh, but you can see we've got our microscopes in there. Uh, up on the wall, of course, we've got some images of the, the sort of samples that we might be looking at underneath microscopes. Um, but this is the central lab, and I'd love to get us back in there uh, on a day we're doing something like even as simple as water processing. It's really an interesting look into what it takes to maintain a facility like this. All right, we're going to head on down, and I've got a, a, a kind of a really cool sneak peek today. Um, as part of our wildlife response program, we actually have another room down on this side. Right across from the, the kitchen earlier, we passed by the vet lab, and I'd love to get us in there uh, when we talk about wildlife response. But down on this side, we actually have what we call the ICU, and of course, we, we have to be cute, we spell it out, S-E-A. Uh, but we're going to peek our head in there. We don't have any wildlife response patients right now, but we do have uh, uh, one of our birds in there. He's been getting eye drops, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'd love to visit him a little bit later on, but we're just going to swing on in. So this is IC. Uh, we can go on through that door there and just take a look around. Uh, if you did have the opportunity to visit us when we had the walrus calf or when we had the beluga calf a couple years back, uh, you may have actually seen them here. Um, and so we're just going to take a sneak peek in here and then head right back, back out into the corridor. Uh, but maybe we can swing in someday and visit our bird that's in here. All right. And finally, we're going to talk about something I really want to get us out to see, like everything else on this tour. I just want you to see it all. Uh, but this is another lab, and this one's pretty cool. We can talk about it here. Uh, research animals that we have here at the Sea Life Center are two types of large sea ducks. Uh, they're actually called eiders, E-I-D-E-R. And we have Stellar's eiders here, and we have spectacled eiders. And the spectacled eiders, I'm going to bring you on down here because we got some pictures here. Uh, the spectacled eiders are called spectacled because they look like they're wearing spectacles, look like they're wearing glasses. And even the ducklings have those little glasses. So I would love to get us back there uh, and check out some of those birds. You can see right on up here, uh, mom's got a little bit of the spectacle there. And then the males uh, especially have it pronounced. But our eiders are part of the research that's ongoing here. These two species, the spectacle eiders and the stellar eiders, they are threatened here in the state of Alaska. Uh, and so we're kind of taking a look at the challenges they may be facing. 
Um, they like to nest out in these tundra marshes. You can see all these pools of water out there in those tundra marshes. And uh, one of the things that's kind of been hitting those areas is along the coast, they keep getting inundated with some seawater, with salt water. Uh, and of course, the young ducklings aren't necessarily ready for uh, being out in salt water yet. So that's one of the problems we're investigating. But there's all sorts of challenges facing them, uh, from introduced predators uh, to humans expanding into their area, uh, or even just you know the impacts we can have on the world around us do affect these animals. With the spectacled eyes in particular, one of my favorite facts about them is that in the winter season, they all gather in a single location in the middle of the Bering Sea. Uh, and so you can come on over and get a good look at this picture. That is the global population of wild spectacled eiders. They all gather in one area and the presence of the birds there actually keeps the, the ice from forming there in the winter when the ice comes down that far south. And so something of concern would be if something impacted their food in that area, it's going to hit the entire global population in one go. So we're going to head back on down the, the corridor here. Uh, that way is actually to our pump room. Uh, and we discovered we have no Wi-Fi back there. Uh, it's really difficult to have good Wi-Fi in a lot of areas in the Sea Life Center. Uh, but maybe we can get you back and check out pumps and our wells uh, and all that. But we're going to head back down the corridor the way we came and just talk about some of the research that we've done. Because we saw labs. Obviously, we're not, uh, you know, we don't have everyone here. We got a lot of people working from home. So uh, hopefully we can get some interviews going with a couple of our scientists here. But we do all sorts of stuff here like field research. And with that field research, we can use our animals in-house for some of it, for development. So one of my, my uh, uh, favorite projects was this, this biotelemetry, where we actually were looking at how our sea lions were moving um, and, and the impacts that the, the movement had, like how many calories are they burning chasing down their prey, right, their fish, which of course they then swallow whole, uh, but they had these little accelerometers all strapped to them. Uh, if you have a phone, right, if you turn that phone sideways and the picture goes, oh, you're looking at me sideways, and it turns the phone sideways, that's done with an accelerometer in the phone that can tell which direction the phone's being moved and how it's being moved. We put one of those on a sea lion, a fancier one perhaps that's in your phone, but we were able to actually watch how the sea lion moved chasing its food. And we could do other things like uh, have an internal thermometer. So as they swallowed that fish, we could watch how it changed their stomach temperature. Because sea lions, they're warm blooded like you and I. They've got a nice hot body temperature. But the fish, when they swallow it, it's cold, right? It's like the temperature of the water around about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And when they swallow that, you can actually see, if we're graphing the stomach temperature, you can see the stomach temperature go chunk, and then slowly recover. And we actually found that we could estimate the size of the fish that was being swallowed when they were doing that, um, just based on how much it was dropping their stomach temperature, how long it took the stomach temperature to come back up. Uh, and you can even kind of estimate calories if you know what the general prey uh, of that sea lion is, what sort of fish they're eating, and how large the fish was. You can estimate uh, a little bit there. So uh, at some point in the future, I'd love to talk to our researchers and talk to them about their research. We've actually got one next week. We're going to be talking about some shark research that the Sea Life Center has been doing here. Uh, so keep an eye open on all of our channels, and that means here on our YouTube uh, where we're doing two live streams a day, and we're also doing an all-day tank stream. There's one going on right now. You can view some of our uh, deeper living fish here at the Sea Life Center. Uh, so twice a day here on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit that bell. We'll let you know when we're going live, but also on our Facebook. If you look up the Alaska Sea Life Center Facebook page, we're doing a couple programs there a week. Uh, just yesterday, we went in with Mara, our female stellar sea lion. Turns out she's pregnant. We've known that for a while, but we don't know how far along the pup is necessarily. So go back, check out that video. We were doing some x-rays with her to try to see uh, pup development in her, and uh, it was a really fun time. So check out all of our channels for our Teleaquarium programs where we are bringing the aquarium to you. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next stream. You can catch us. Thank you so much for visiting.